Um, yeah, hi everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Super excited uh, to be here. Uh, I said, I'm Sebastian, one of the founders of Uminovo, and I'm today going to talk about how we are rethinking the electronics value chain. You might ask yourself, like, why electronics? Well, because it, it matters. This is a quote from the German ZVEE. The electronics industry is the guiding industry for digitalization and the pacemaker for technological progress. Because if you really do think a little bit about it, about all the innovative solutions that you might come up with from the smartphone in your pocket, the autonomous cars that drive us around potentially in this near future, or carbon capture machines that might have an additional impact in our efforts in sustainability, what they all have in common that they are built on electronics, on hardware. And if you look at a very large number and you look at the whole electronics value chain and how these innovative ideas are brought to life and you bring them from idea to market readiness, the value that's added just in this sector is around 3.4 trillion euros. So it's a gigantic market. This is tapping all of our everyday lives. But how are these products brought to life? Um, normally it goes down like this in a very simplified way that you have an OEM or a product developer that is designing a product. You can think of Apple as designing your iPhone, but what they're not doing is manufacturing the product themselves. They're handing this off to an electronic manufacturing service or EMS, which are doing the manufacturing and the testing of their products. In Apple's case, this is often Foxconn, and then they're really shipping it back to Apple so they can really sell it. But there is something happening in the middle here, and that's the very tedious quoting and procurement process in electronics. And how this is normally going down is that Excel data, Excel and other pieces of information, technical data are just sent around um, from the OEM to the EMS, and the EMS has to somehow make sense of this data. And this is where we tap in with our solution, Lumi Quote, ending the email and Excel chaos of this quoting and procurement process of the electronics manufacturing services. So what do these, um, what these things that have in common is the, the building blocks of our software that we're building is the cloud native nature of our software, kind of alleviating this from their data silos on premise, allowing for more collaborative experience, leveraging automation behind the scenes and bringing a first class consumer grade user experience into the enterprise workflows. So for our customers, we're trying to give them a tool that helps them to outpace their competition because the market is competitive. And everything that can help them to win in this regard is gold. So this will allow them to solve RFQs at lightning speed, offer more competitive prices and solve issues more seamlessly. So let's quickly jump into a demo so I can show you a small part of the workflow, how this normally goes down. So I'm here in, in the product, this is like a dashboard of a project I just created um, with um, the bill of material and the sourcing part being the most in integral parts. So when I'm now, um, I receive a bill of material for my, for my customer and I say, hey, there's assembly. So there's a product I wanna build. Let's assume it's just a PCBA, so a printed circuit board that I'm selecting here. And now I have a random Excel, Excel file, could be something like this that comes in any shape and format. And we're trying to quickly make sense of it. And this is where our intelligent BOM uh, importing feature comes in, where we're just basically selecting, selecting the Excel. It runs through it, checks parts, automatically classifies which columns, um, which information is in which column. Um, we hit next, and then we get like an a feedback that's like a line by line feedback where we can grind through the Excel looking which parts um, we have automatically detected. Um, if it's green, then it's fine. We could validate the manufacturer and the part. That's normally what you see in a bill of material. Um, then other information like things you shouldn't, uh, if things shouldn't be placed and shouldn't be ordered, we're also, also automatically detecting this. And we also have cases where we have alternative parts, which are found in, this, in the same row, which is normally tedious to disaggregate, or we can just go into it and quickly approve these parts. If you're not, not an expert, this might be a bit quick for you, but for an expert, this is like um, an easy workflow. They look through it, see, okay, that looks fine. 
and then they can import the, the bill of material in something that we call our digital twin. Now all these components that you see here with these short abbreviations are listed and quantified. And here you have these parts, which are now like aggregated from our part library, which are linked to the data sheet where, where they're, how they actually look like automatically. And that gives the, um, um, the operator confidence that they've understood what the customer really wants. When they jump into sourcing, they can just quickly generate different scenarios, which we call order configurations. For example, a prototype case with 10 pieces where they wanted to have it super fast, maybe just from a few of their um, quick distributors. Um, I'm gonna select now Parnell, Mouser, and DigiKey as three examples. You can hit save, and then this, this runs in the background and catch, fetches data. And in parallel, I can already get another for the series production, 900 pieces, and get the best price I can find given a certain date. I can hit save, and then the Sphinx automatically operates in the background. You can see for the higher cases, I automatically see low stock warnings, long lead time warnings. The current the electronic supply chain is highly under pressure. You might notice because if you wanted to buy a graphics cards or PS5, they're not in stock anymore because there's immense pressure on the supply chain. And we just give them a quick transparency overview to generate as many scenarios they want, um, what they normally the customer demands. And if they're happy with it for now, they can go back to the dashboard. Now they see what the status of the imported bomb is. They see the different scenarios they've created and for now, um, as we're still enlarging the product's capability, they can just leave the workflow, hitting export, and then uh, coming into an Excel file again. We're now from this um, not structure that can be any has any form. We've now moved to something that is um, yeah, a little bit nicer, gives an overview of the different pieces and dumps a lot of information on the customer. What parts we've actually found, uh, what components we have found, what parts we had, how we source them, if there are any warnings they should be aware of, what the prices are, and so on. And this, can, this allows them to go back to their workflow. This, these processes, so cleaning up this bomb and getting this pricing information has normally taken the days or weeks, and we can now do this in a matter of minutes. Okay, that was how we're currently helping our EMS customers. But to be honest, of course, the EMS are just a part, big part of the whole electronics value chain. You know, think about this, the OEM and the EMS again, so the product designer and the one who manufactures it, there is this interface friction be between their procurement and their quoting that we're currently tackling. But we are implicitly already tackling more interface friction. That is one, the internal discussions between the OEM say, uh, EMS sales guys who are quoting, but then the internal procurement departments who have to talk to their suppliers. The one of you I listed a, uh, a couple of seconds ago for different parts and also the other distributors to get their quotes in time. And most of the information is actually originating in the design of the OEM, where there's none of these places is great data communication flowing around because all of this data sits in silos all of these processes are highly manual. And there's one thing that's coming on top of all this is that there's a crazy talent shortage across the whole supply chain with the new folks coming in, just not being used to the old way of using, uh, using old tools and old information. So we kind of need software to democratize this whole process to use automation and new user experiences to make it accessible to a broader audience and really transform how electronics are procured today. So with LumiCore, we're just tackling this piece of the puzzle now, but we truly believe that the whole procurement and quoting experience of electronics is not something that should be solved horizontally, but has to be solved um, in this specific vertical in an end-to-end -end workflow. And this is what we working towards building something like an operating system for the electronics industry. And the most important next step for us here is the OEM expansion. Because how you can think about it is that there is a lot of information sitting in the heads of the EMS, which is not accessible to the OEM. So using these capabilities that we're encoding in software, shifting it to the OEM workflow is something that we are up on next. And this is also something where we want the help from the Applied AI ecosystem.
So our ecosystem so far, so far we've raised 2.5 million in pre-seed funding last year, adding some stellar angels and investors to our team. We have around 20 partnerships from different distributors and integration partners that are working with us. And we have four co-development partners really thinking about the next features we can build and 13 early adopters um, using the software that we have already created, but potentially you as from the Applied AI ecosystem helping us to really think about the OEM expansion strategy and how we can use our knowledge that we've built um, in your procurement and design workflows. Thank you.